Okay, let's now put this kit together, beginning with the torso and the waist and the head. First thing I'm going to do is the head. You definitely need this part here. Snap into place like so. I'm going to move the eyeball to the left, to there, so it's easy to identify it. I don't know how well it will look through it. There we go. Like that. And then we just slide that down here. Oh, hold on a second. Ah. Make sure that's closed entirely. All right, now close it up. Close that there. Close that there. That's actually nice. So I don't have to worry about popping this on. All I have to do is do this. Slide it in through there. All the way. Stick the backpack here. And the little thrusters again. Come on. There we go. The pegs on this is very, very small and sometimes hard to put in. I feel like I'm about to break it. And then we put these guys in there. There we go. Waste unit. That goes here and here. That slides into place like so. Ooh, we gotta be very careful with those metal parts. Also, I have to figure out which one is which. I think it's this one. Yeah, this one goes there. There we go. We put that there. And we put this here. Nice. That's nice. Ooh, yeah. I like it. Alright, let's now move on to the next part of the build. Next up is the legs of the Zuda. This should be very simple to build. I'm going to take this, these two parts, these two pieces apart because I need access to this. I'm going to put that one there. And this one in here, and seal it up for good. And then put this one in here. Very simple. The legs are very simple. Whoops.
Whoops, oh, I'll go to there. And uh, before I put the legs, let me put this one on. Legs of the Zuda are now complete. That's actually really nice. Look at that. Alright, let's now move on to the next part of the build. Alright, so the next part of the build is going to be the arms of the Zuda, already painted as you can see. Take these two guys here and put them together like so. Let me take this, put it through there, take this, slide that in like so. Now, this part I have to remove because I need to paint it, but I'm going to push it in until it goes all the way in. There we go. And we have this part that covers this, this part that goes here. I'm surprised they don't give you two, but then again they don't give you two Sturmfels. See if they have an if they had another one that goes there that'd be great, but I guess they didn't think about that. Let me put that here. Good. Alright, that's good. And then the bam. There we go. It's a shame they didn't give you like an open parts hand open hand for this. That would be great. But here you go. The the arms, whoops, the arms of the Zuda are now complete. Let's put it together and see how it looks. Okay, with all the parts now complete, let's put it together again and see how it looks overall. We'll begin with the legs. Putting it here. Putting this one here. There we go. And then we have the left arm going all the way in. And then the right arm. And I had to take the hand off so I could put this one on because I put the other hand on the rifle. On the, uh, you know, anti-ship rifle. And let's put this one here, just for giggling. And then the heat hawk. There we go. And since it's fully painted, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it falling off all the time. I don't know if it's the other way around or this way. Yeah, we'll leave it that for now. All right, there we go. My camo version of the Zuda is now complete. What do you guys think of that? Okay, so here's a closer inspection of the Zuda. I'm going to have a little turntable here. Here is what it looks like from behind, the legs and the thrusters. Should have put a thruster there where, the, where that little part is that I put behind it for the detail, but it's okay. Um, but the paint job is pretty good, as you can see there. Here are the 
waste area. Okay, come around. Put a little detail parts under the arm. The waste area is kind of neat how I did that with the metal parts there. There's the thruster backpack. Here's the shield, of course. And here's the upper body. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, I could have easily left it the way the color is, but uh, ever since I saw Zach Aurelius' um, video review of that camo pattern, uh, and him demonstrating it, I said to myself, oh, but you know what, I could pretty much do this. And as you can see, I did. That actually came out really nice. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? And of course, you could turn the shield up front to fire the stun files or take it out and put it on its hand. And you can pull out these little claw type pincers to, or not pincers, like, um, yeah, like claw type weaponry for melee, for melee use, whether you want to do it like that or not. But, uh, I, you know what, um, I know that the hand, the, uh, this hand, if I'm not mistaken, I think the hand on the camphor would benefit this, and I know that the camphor has uh, open hands, so if you have the camphor mass uh, high grade, you could probably apply it to this kit if you want to have an open hand format. But yeah, I mean it's good. It looks really nice, and the paint job outstanding. Well, outstanding to a point because there is some leakage, uh, which I made some mistakes here and there. Um, if you're going to commit to something like this, let me lower this down. If you're going to commit to something like this. The best thing to do is making sh uh, make sure that the tape that you apply on the parts goes on nice and smooth. Now, here's the one thing that I've learned of a mistake. Um, I put it on my t on my cutting board table, but I should have cleaned up my table because there was a lot of dirt, a lot of leftover uh, dust from me sanding it down and all all that stuff. So it may have collected that, and as I was applying over it, it. I guess it, the adherity, the stickiness was gone at that time. So the best thing to do is when you are going to do patterns using um, masking tape, make sure your table is clean. And a good thing would, uh, uh, another idea would be to take uh, something else to apply it on so you can peel it off easily. Best product you could probably use is wax paper. If you put the masking tape over wax paper and then peel it off, I don't think the tape. I don't think the uh, the um, the uh, uh, adhesive will stick to the wax paper. That's a that's a thought right there. I think I remember doing something similar to this years ago, uh, and I may have done it on the um, one one hundred scale uh, Gaussian when I painted it that that tiger color scheme. But I've always wanted to try this, and I'm glad that I figured it out. But yes, it has its mistakes here and there. Um, it's not going to win no awards, you could say. But I now know what to do on my next kits in the future. So I'm glad that I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to experiment it on this, and it looks really nice. Now, obviously, I want this gun on this, and I don't know how... Well, remember, this this arm was like very loosey-goosey when I put this on so now when I put now that it's painted I can now do this uh, actually that goes forward is it forward or back? I forgot but it doesn't matter so if I take now it's a lot stiffer now so that's actually really good So I stick that there, and that pops out. Yeah, I think this one's gonna have to be glued. Okay. 
Come on, get in there. I think I may have to pop it. All right, I gotta take this whole thing out again. Then pull that out. I know this is wrong because I think this has to go forward and has to be like this. Yeah, like that. Here we go. Now we put this back onto this. It's a shame there's no peg that actually holds up the rifle. There we go. Alright, let's try this again. Hopefully this does not pop out again. I've been always pl using this gun in battle operations too, so it's kind of fun. You know what? I'll leave it like that. And I think I'm going to take his arm like so. Do that. Then take out the heat hawk. And put him like that there. And unfortunately, the there's no attachment in the back. Actually, I think this actually can go in the back for the um, here. No, actually it doesn't because I don't even know what the hell this is for. Maybe I gotta look at the manual. But regardless of the case, yeah, that's okay. And I kind of like the fact that I extended the waist. That's cool. There you go. So, my thoughts on this. I'm glad that I picked it up. I'm glad that this came out the way I like it. Um, I'm glad that I was able to experiment on uh, this idea of extending the waist, giving it more uh, option parts here and there, um, some photo edge parts. But I think what sold it, despite all the parts that I put on, was the paint job. And I hope you guys learned to appreciate it as well. That you know, it was something that I wasn't actually planning to do, but it just came out of nowhere. And I think that's the beauty of this. So when you're building something, a uh, Gundam kit, you know, all of a sudden, boom, an idea kicks in your head and you go, you know what? Let me try that. And that's the beauty of building Gundam. I've always enjoyed doing something like that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Um, it's. Uh, I'm going to have a decision in regards to this being entered in, in MosquitoCon after a recent news that I just found out. And I'll discuss that in a later video. But for now, this concludes my episode of, uh, of episode 8 of the high grade Zuda custom, literally custom. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And what can I say? But stay tuned for more Gundam customs. Yet the. Well, yeah, Gundam Customs and Gundam Models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.